Okay, hi everyone. Um, we are going to do a little video on the E64. Um, I'm going to uh, share my screen for you guys and do a little presentation. All right. David, can you see that? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, thanks, everyone. So we just uh, we just thought we'd take an opportunity to kind of go over the the E64 um, stuff with with everyone. I know there's been a lot of questions. Um, we've had a lot of questions as well. Um, we were waiting on a bunch of information coming out, and you know, hopefully, hopefully everything's starting to come out. You know, pretty freely. We got a lot of information today that we're going to share with with um, with you guys and the membership. Um, but you know, if, if this doesn't cover in everything that you've got questions about, you know, please uh, feel free to to email myself, David, or or Julia Osmond, um, and their email addresses will be at the, the end of this presentation. Uh, it should be real quick, fifteen minutes. Um, but like I said, any questions, then just feel free. And David, please feel free if you've got things that I miss and you want to add, go ahead and add it uh, to it as well, please. All right. Let me go back to the start here. Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay, so um, E64 season 20 to 23 starting in, in August. So this gives you a kind of a rundown on, you know, what E64 is. Uh, who's going to be in E64? I know that's been a lot of, uh, the, we've had a lot of questions about that, and we've actually been asking some of the same questions to, to USYS. So hopefully that will clear up some of uh, some of those questions. Tentative schedules and um, the event schedules were released yesterday. Conference schedules uh, are still a work in progress, but that's that's kind of common, and we'll, we'll touch on that as well. And then some of the costs and, and obviously the, the benefits and the partners that we've, we've got, um, with E64, uh, I know those have been big questions as well. So let's uh, let's get into it. Okay, so what is E64? Um, basically, E64 is the is the top tier performance uh, league of of USYS. USYS stands for United States Youth Soccer. USYS is the largest soccer organization in the world. Um, so this is their upper echelon, if you like, of, of elite competition. Um, it, it will comprise of 64 clubs from, from all over the nation. Um, and the way that's kind of broken down is it's going to be in, in eight different conferences um, uh, throughout the nation. And, and we're going to be in the frontier conference. Again, we'll, we'll speak a little bit more about that in, in a minute or two. Um, you know, why did we really want to, to pursue E64? Um, it, it provides highly competitive games throughout the season in an ideal environment so that each player can play against the best and ultimately raise their game. You know, that's kind of the moniker of, of E64 and these elite competitive leagues. Um, you know, some of us were in the DPL last year, the Development Player League. Uh, some of us have, uh, have, have, been in, have been familiar with, with different competitions, ECNL, um, Girls Academy, Development Academy over the years. Um, you know, so this for us is a great opportunity for for us to be playing against the best the best teams um, in the nation consistently uh, throughout the course of a of a year um, of ten month season. Okay. So who is in Elite sixty four? The the million dollar question um, is, is we've been getting is who are we going to be playing against? What are the clubs? You know who's involved, all of that, that good stuff. So, like I mentioned, we are in the the Frontier Conference, um, and the Frontier Conference <clears throat> comprises of Louisiana, Mississippi, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Texas. Texas is so big that it's actually split up into two uh, different um, state organizations, North and South. So, both North and South will be in the um, the Frontier Conference. Um, so the boys conference, there will be seven teams, um, ourselves, Rush Select South. So those of you that are familiar with um, the Rush Select program, um, they are basically a, a combination of, of different Rush clubs, um, which we had an option to be part of, but we felt like we were strong enough to, to kind of go alone. 
Um, but this iteration of Rush Select South will be um, Mississippi Rush and Cajun Rush from Louisiana. So those those two uh, clubs will be combining joining forces to to create a, a club um, that we'll we'll play against. And they're actually going to be our travel partners as well because they're the closest to us. Um, and that's just a common a common thing. I think that ECNL have travel partners. Development Academy used to have travel partners when they existed. So it's, it's you know it's a common it's a common thing. Um, Westlake FC they're they're um, from from Austin, Texas. Capital City FC also from Austin. Tigres from um, San Antonio, Texas. Um, El Paso locomotives. I mean, imaginatively titled. Uh, they'll be from El Paso and Dallas Cosmos from from Dallas. So, you know, you can see that it's, it's kind of Texas laden, um, but there's a reason for that. Uh, Texas is such a big state with incredible competition. Uh, if you look at the, for example, the city of, of Dallas, the Dallas metro area has about, you know, 100,000 soccer players. You know, the whole state of Tennessee has last count, maybe about 45,000. So it's uh, you know it's a pretty it's a pretty strong state uh, and the competition is going to be going to be fantastic. Um, just a side note, El Paso Locomotives they are actually in partnership with their USL um, club down there and uh, and they're fantastic. Uh, they're going to be wonderful competition. Obviously, that presents its own. Um, source of, uh, of burdens if we if we have to travel to El Paso, which we don't. Uh, and again, we'll speak about the travel uh, in, a, in a minute. But um, that's going to be a very, very um, tough addition, but good addition to, to the competition. And um, I'm, I'm excited to see how we can uh, compete against, uh, against those clubs. Um, on the girls' side, it's a little bit smaller. There were two other clubs that were, um, that were uh, involved initially. Um, but some of the vetting process that, um, that, that all the clubs go through um, is pretty rigorous. So it has, you know, financial stuff. It's got um, set up of clubs. It's got facilities. It's coaches' licenses. It's amount of players, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, you know, the E64 is extremely selective with who they they allow in, um, and you know, after further. Of a bit of a, a deeper dive, uh, the, the the National League felt like the, the two other clubs um, wouldn't have been a good addition. So, with that being said, I'm okay with that this year because it's a little bit less travel right now for the first year. So, for the girls, it would be Lobos Rush, Rush Select again, Westlake um, FC One and FC Two, um, both from Austin um, again, and then obviously the Dallas the Dallas Cosmos. So. You'll notice that Westlake have got two teams in there, and they're extremely competitive in the Austin area again, um, South, South Texas. So uh, they'll they'll be very good competition, and um, this is a good a good first step for the for the girls' conference. So I'm excited about that as well. All right, so the the national event schedule was was released maybe two days ago to the to the general public. We had it a few days before. Um, but not much. Um, you know, the dates and the locations look look good for us as, as far as we're concerned. Um, you'll notice that um, these are the girls' dates. Um, please note that you're not travelling to every single one of these events. Um, you 13s and 14s. Um, you guys will be doing um, November 4th through the 7th. You'll be in Round Rock, Texas, which is just uh, outside of, of Austin. Um, and that's for U13s and 14 teams. And then you guys will also be playing February 3rd through the 6th in Tampa, Florida. Um, you know, both of those the locations, um, Austin and Tampa, uh, you can get direct flights, low cost carriers cover those, those, um, those areas. You know, um, you know, I've driven to Tampa before. Um, I think David's actually driven to Austin <clears throat> before. So both are drivable. Both are um, both are connected pretty nicely by by airports um, from Memphis. Um, direct flights, low cost. So with that regard, uh, you know, I'm I'm pretty pleased about that. Um, 
So moving on to the, the U15s through the U19s, you guys will do two of three events. Um, and this depends on when teams around the nation play in high school. So if you're familiar with the old um, National League Pro or National League as it was before that, um, it was very similar. There would be three events, you would do two of them, and depending on if you're, if you're high school played soccer in the spring or in the fall or whatever it might be, um, that would determine which, which events that, that, that you would go to. Um, we haven't been assigned which two we're going to go to yet because theoretically um, we could do we could do all three. Um, girls high school season in the fall and, and Tennessee is in um, in the fall. So you know December eighth through the twelfth, Central Florida. Um, they've not released which which location this is, but they have intimated that they believe that it's going to be Disney. Um, which if it is Disney, then again, if anybody's been to Disney for any of the Disney showcases or anything that they've done in the past, it's phenomenal. Uh, phenomenal fields, phenomenal location. Again, Orlando, super easy to get to, direct, um, direct flights. You can drive there if you really want to. Um, you know, low cost carriers um, service those, those areas. So um, if it, if it, if they do announce that it is Disney, which they're leaning towards, I think they're trying to, to tie up a few loose ends, then that would be fantastic. Um, January um, 19th through the 21st would be Mesa, Arizona. So that's not far out, outside of uh, Phoenix. Again, serviced by Southwest from the, um, actually serviced by all the, the carriers out of Memphis. Um, now that would be a flight, you're welcome to drive, but I think that would take, a, I think that would take some doing. <clears throat> um, so that's probably a flight. Again, that's no different from what national league teams have been doing in the past anyway. Um, wonderful complex, complex, it's called Legacy Sports Complex. A lot of the Rush uh, Select events have been there, so some of you might actually be familiar with that, but it is, it's a fabulous complex. Weather is, <clears throat> is usually fabulous. Um, it's just a great location to go play. So again, coaches want to be there. It's a great time frame for, for coaches, college coaches. So again, another fantastic opportunity for uh, for recruiting. Um, and then the the third one is one that we're probably all familiar with is in Greensboro, North Carolina, and that would be in in March. Um, and years gone by, National League used to have their uh, their their event in Greensboro. Um, around November, December, am I right, David? Correct. Yeah, so um, that was never a good setup because the weather in <clears throat> Greensboro, North Carolina in December is usually pretty cold. And uh, whenever they had a, an event, it used to always seem to get some sort of rain. I think I've been there with snow, rain, wind, sleet, hail. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of pleased to see that they've moved that out to, to March, um, around about spring break time, there or thereabouts, weather will be better. Um, the facilities are terrific. And again, it's not a bad, um, not a bad journey to, to get to um, Greensboro. Um, and then the last event that everybody will go to either youth, uh, all the way through from U13 all the way up to U19 is the national finals in um, Oceanside, California. And I'll touch on that in just a second. Let's have a look at the boys. The boys is, is, is identical in terms of locations. However, the dates are just slightly different. Either they go a week after or the weekend before. Um, again, U13 and U14, because they're not in high school, everybody goes to the same two events. The same two events will be in Round Rock, Texas and, and Tampa, Florida in February. And then for us, obviously, because our boys play high school in the spring, that means that, <clears throat> that we will not be going to the, or we will una be unable to go to the, the Greensboro, North Carolina event in March, towards the end of March. So um, through process of elimination, you've not told us that yet, but that's what will happen. Um, our first event will be December 1st through the 5th in Central Florida. Again, hopefully it'll be at Disney. That's what they're, they're talking about. And then um, late January in uh, Mesa, Arizona, just outside Phoenix. So good locations, good facilities, 
good opportunities to be seen by college coaches. Um, you know, these are out with the uh, the the college soccer season. Um, so again, this is this is a fantastic time. We've done events in the past where it's, it's conflicted with with uh, college coaches, and that really limits how many um, coaches obviously can come and watch. But this doesn't conflict with that at all. So um, I'm excited excited about that. Uh, so, and then just to touch on the last one, this is um, Oceanside, California. Um, everybody goes to this event, um, all ages. Um, and this is, this is the, the national finals event. There's going to be four brackets, <clears throat> excuse me, um, that, are, that, are, that are dependent on how you do at the, the first two National League events. So, what does that mean? So it's explained more in the in the document that we got today, but say you go to, um, say the two events that you have to go to are one at Disney and one at um, uh, Mesa, Phoenix. So depending on how those results go, um, if you finish top of your bracket in, in those events, then you'll be in the championship bracket at, um, at Oceanside, California, playing for a national championship. A lot of the time when we've gone to showcase, true showcase events, there's no scores and there's no, there's, there's no, um, they don't base anything off of points or anything like that. It's really, you just go, you participate, you're playing the games. But this gives you an added benefit of actually going, playing competitive games that actually mean something and that can have a direct um, result on where you're actually placed uh, when you go to the finals in Oceanside, California. Oceanside, California is, um, uh, David, help me out here with the geography. Um, just, I think just it's north a little of San Diego. Yeah, just north of San Diego. So, um, again, um, July, June, July, end of June, start of July, San Diego, um, a fantastic place to, to go and play some, some games, especially if you're competing for a, a national championship, which we hope to be doing. So, exciting schedule. Um, you know, these events, this is why we are doing it, quite frankly. This is why we are playing in E64. Those that, again, those that are familiar with <clears throat> um, regionals or nationals or the National League Pro showcases, um, those events are fantastic. <clears throat> they're really well put together. They're wonderfully organized. They're well attended by coaches, college coaches. Um, and obviously, with E64 being the premier, um, the top tier of, of soccer and USYS, I fully expect these, these events to be first class and absolutely brimming with college coaches and scouts and everything else that goes along with that. So um, it's, it's exciting. The locations are great. The facilities are great. And I think it's, it's going to be a, a good addition to, to our schedules. Um, you know, I think it'll be a good addition for sure. Okay, so some questions about the pathway and, and everything else that goes along with E64. So E64 will be the, the primary pathway for all U13 um, through U19 Lobos Rush E64 teams. E64, the Rush E64 teams were formerly known as, as uh, the Premier teams. Um, you know, so we've changed that name. The new moniker is, you know, um, 07 Lobos Rush E64 boys or whatever it might be. So that will be the top team in the age group. Um, and like we, like I said, that'll be the primary pathway for, for all of those premier teams <clears throat> or E64 teams. Um, so conference schedules, um, the, the, the conference schedules of, of TBD, we had a, a conference scheduling call yesterday with them. Um, to, to initially bang out kind of when when will the, the games likely best be played depending on Texas High School, Louisiana High School, Mississippi High School, and Tennessee High School. So um, I'm pretty pleased with the, with the scheduling. Um, the dates haven't been ironed out, but we're working on that over the next, uh, the next little bit. Again, those that have done Premier League uh, or National League Mid-South, um, old, the old Regional League, you know, those those scheduling dates don't usually come out until the middle of July. 
Um, you know, I'm hoping that we'll get them out well before the middle of July, um, hopefully by the, the middle of June or, or, you know, towards the latter part of June so that we really can plan the schedule. Um, one thing that, that is really important to these guys um, and to us is that we have common sense scheduling. Um, I'm trying to, the biggest, the biggest conflict that we have is with the high school girls playing um, kind of the opposite of everybody else. That would mean that the, the girls would have to play during the high school season. Um, I'm not crazy about that. Um, the, the club coaches are not crazy about that. And the high school coaches are not crazy about that. So we're really trying to get to a place where there are actually no games going on during the high school season. There might be one weekend, um, but what we're trying to do is schedule that early enough on in the girls' high school season that it doesn't really have any bearing on regional regional play or district play or, or state play. So, you know, it's not taking the best players away for a weekend during the middle of the of the tough schedule run in. Um, so that's that's the plan. Um, again, they've, they've been very willing to work with us. And, uh, and obviously, with the girls having a little bit less in their bracket initially, again, I think that's probably a good thing because it allows us to, to do some scheduling when, it, when it's best for us and not when the girls are trying to play high school training every day, not training with their club teams and then disappearing for a weekend to, to play. So, uh, so, again, I think it's a good thing um, and we'll, we'll try and avoid any of those high school, those high school weekends. <clears throat> Just like we were saying, avoiding high school conflicts. Um, but the big one, you know, when when the initial talks of um, we were one of the first teams in this conference to be admitted, and we had um, a discussion with the commissioner Mike Leland and Simon Collins, um, who runs USYS. You know, what would it look like if we if we did bring in a team from El Paso? You know, well. You know, the, the drive from Memphis to El Paso is about 17 and something hours. I mean, we're, we're basically in the border of Mexico. Um, so, you know, I was very hesitant to say, oh, yeah, let's, let's bring them in. This would be fantastic. However, knowing that how good of a competition they're going to be for, for our boys, I did want to see if there was some way that we could involve them in some way, shape or form. Um, and that would mean that we'll actually probably, we will play them. No, probably we'll, we will play them in a neutral site so we'll go down we'll play probably somewhere in, in texas it's kind of equidistant um somewhat um and 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 play both those games in a weekend and, and get the home and away at a neutral site site location um again the competition is going to be fantastic they're going to be very 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 good i would not be surprised if they're actually competing for a national championship at the at the end of end of the year um, I spoke to the the, the, um, the sporting director of the USL club that they're associated with yesterday, and he is um, he was telling me about some of the players and the competition, and and they sound fantastic. So I'm looking forward to to really playing against them and and, and having our boys kind of test test against them. So <clears throat> one of the things again that, that you know we've been asked. So if we're doing E64, does this mean that we can't do state league or national league mid south or regionals or nationals? Well, no, that's that's not what it means. Um, we can do all that as well. Um, for some of us, it'll make sense. For some of us, it won't make sense, and that's okay. Um, for some teams individually, teams can elect to participate in USYS national championship series. So what is the USYS National Championship Series? It's basically TSL, which is Tennessee State League, um, or NLMS, which is National League Mid-South, um, and then and regionals and nationals. So, um, for example, if our team qualifies this year, let's talk about the girls. If, the, if one of our girls' teams qualify for a, uh, the National League Mid-South, I would encourage them to participate in the National League Mid-South this year. Um, and I think I would encourage, if they, if they were to win National League Mid-South, I would encourage them to go to regionals. Um, if they won regionals, we'd encourage them to go to nationals. I think uh, it's, it's going to be a busy year for them. 
but I think that would be the the most um, advantageous route to, to to playing good competition, continuing to play good competition, and getting the best of, of both both worlds. I know that change can be tough. Um, change is hard for sure. So I know that we've had great success at regionals and nationals and in state cup. So we we're, we don't really want to take that away from from anyone right now. Um, or in the future, quite honestly, if we can manage it to do both, then I think that's what, what we want to be doing. So um, to answer everybody's question, can we do E64 and can we do state, state league, national league, mid-south, regionals and or nationals? The answer to that is yes. We'll work with your coach and figure out the best pathway. Um, obviously, we'll um, we'll take into account the, the travel and the team and everything else that goes along with that. But... Like I said, it's certainly it's certainly on the table. We don't want to stop teams from having great opportunities. You know, some of the best memories that, that that Coach David and I have had over the last four or five years have been going to regionals and seeing our teams, you know, just dominate in, in some instances and, and obviously win national regional championships and then make it to national national um, national finals. So again, that's the that's the same. One thing I do want to make clear though, um, the E64 is a higher echelon. It's a higher league than what we're going to be expecting now in National League Mid-South, Regionals and Nationals. Because the best clubs and indeed the best teams are going to be progressing through to, to E64. So Nationals and Regionals will probably have a different look um, than, than maybe it has in the past. Some of, those that have, some of us that have been there and lucky enough to be there it might have a different look moving forward. Um, that's tough to tell, but that's certainly something that um, that, is, that is on the table. Just looking at the other clubs around the nation that have joined E64 and some of the teams, then we really want to be in the championship brackets of E64 when, when all is said and done, but we can still do um, regionals and nationals if it, if it makes sense. Dave, have you got anything to add on that? I mean, just, just kind of going with what you're saying, um, you know, with the E64, you look at through the other conferences and the teams, clubs that are in it. Um, there's a lot of household names. Um, if you have been to the National League Pro, uh, Philadelphia Ukrainians, Cup, Kings Hammer, uh, some out west. So uh, the, the competition is going to be incredibly good, um, especially with both the boys and girls being in there with some Texas teams, which just has a wealth of talent throughout the entire state, just because of the massive population they have. So, um, you know, going with the E64 again, it's about that pathway. Um, what's best for those, you know, the young men and women of what they're wanting to achieve through playing soccer. And um, this is just a great avenue for that with a little bit more structure um, and guaranteed three years of it as opposed to, you know, year by year having to really uh, re-qualify for that National League Pro. But, you know, that's that's the good thing about, I think, in this E64 is going to give that to um, our players, so. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> I completely agree. Um, you know, one thing to add to that, the, the optional pathway will require more time, it will require more travel, and it will be more expensive, you know, so... Again, that's something that as a team, it's got to make sense and you guys have got to look at it and, and think, okay, this is this is the right pathway for us. We can do this. This is giving us a real opportunity to do something special. Um, and then again, we'll, we'll support um, in any way and every way that we possibly can. And that kind of leads us on to uh, the cost. You know, this is going to be um, the biggest uh, question that some of you are going to have. So um, the, the cost will be somewhere in the, the region of three to four hundred dollars, um, and that'll be assessed to, to E64 players only. Um, that's I know that we probably got sticker shock from that on the front end, but but if I'm if I if we change it up just a little bit, in previous years, let's look at the 07 girls for example. They played in National League PRO Pro. Um, and they, the fees for two events was $4,800 in, in um, entry fees. Um, you know, again, the events were fantastic. 
normally what would happen, the team would collect those fees and they'd have to be they'd have to be paid to um, the National League. In this instance, what's happening, instead of this, uh, being collected by the team, it's going to be collected by the club, and then the club are going to pay in, in one big, big bulk. Um, you know, so what's included in, in that fee? So entry to two E64 National Showcase tournaments, you know, depending on where you're going, you know, Mesa, um, Tampa, Florida, whatever it might be, you'll get, obviously, those two, two fees will be covered um, with that additional uh, assessment. Um, entry to the national finals in June and July, also covered. Um, the conference scheduling, um, you know, there's also a fee to play in National League Mid-South. So, again, that's covered um, with this assessment. Referee assignment um, from the USYS National Office. Um, and two of the big things, number five and number six, um, every E64 player um, is going to get a stat sport GPS performance tracking unit. So you've probably seen um, professional players wearing almost like this, this tight fitted bib and it's got a tracking unit just in just between the shoulder units. Um, it, is, it basically tracks, you know, um, how fast they've ran, total total uh, amount of, of, of meters or, or miles covered. Um, it gives you a heat map of where the player actually moves on the field. It gives a heat map of where the team moves on the field. So there's lots and lots of different um, um, things that we can take from this data and use it to, to help better the performance. Players can look at it based upon the, the, the team. So one through 22 or one through 18, however many is on your squad, you can see who's running the most miles on, on the team, um, who's you know running at the highest speed on the team, et cetera, et cetera. But not only that as well, you can actually see how that stacks up across the nation. Um, so professional teams like um, Spurs, uh, Tottenham Hotspur in England used this. The England national team used this. Harry Kane, uh, Raheem Sterling, um, Alex Morgan, all household names. They they use this data to help improve themselves. Um, there's going to be more, more stuff coming out about Statsport and everything that can actually do. And we'll probably end up doing a separate presentation because, quite honestly, we don't have the time because it's, it's so in-depth and um, it's fantastic. But we do see a lot of college teams using this as well. And also a lot of the the, the top, top tier um, competitive clubs are using this now as well. And now we are part of that elite group. So it's exciting, fantastic. Um, each player will get one um, on the squad and it'll be theirs to, to keep up with. They'll uh, they'll basically charge it like an iPhone at night and then they can start to, they can use it for training purposes, they can use it for games, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, uh, it's a wonderful tool that really allows us to, to dial into the, the periodization of, of players' workload. Um, and that's just fancy ways of saying, you know, managing how much they're doing, what they should be doing, when they should be doing it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, David loves the periodization stuff. So uh, he'll probably, um, I know he is giddy at the, at the, um, uh, the prospect of using this, uh, this equipment. So uh, it's going to be fantastic. Yeah, I will uh, add a little bit to that. I have a player, a couple of players that currently use it. It, it is such a good tool to have, um, not only for the players, but for the coaches to hold those players accountable for what they're trying to achieve. So it, it is a valuable asset that the club will have. And I'm looking forward to seeing everybody have access to it. And, and, and with the stats board, the other tech piece that comes in with all the E64 teams is, is something called ProScore. ProScore allows you to basically do smart videos and, and KPI tracking, key performance indicator tracking. So um, a smart video, if you're looking to um, send a, a video off to a college of a game that you played, that allows you to be able to highlight you, it allows you to, um, to, to, to put on you know, who you're playing against. Um, it, it allows you to measure passing accuracy um, it just gives you so many tools that you can use to, to send to um, college coaches or scouts or whoever it might be. It also gives the coach a great opportunity to kind of look at, okay, so this player, 98% um, of her passes were, were connected. 
or the alternate, you know, she's playing as a centre midfielder. You know, she only connected four passes out of 21. You know, so what do we need to do to either help her improve her game? Do we need to play her in a, a different position? Should we be setting her up uh, for success in, in, in another part of the field? What does she need to work on? Does she need to look at, work on checking her shoulder before, before she receives the ball? You know, you hear coaches talk about speed of play all the time. This kind of gives you those those metrics and you can actually touch, feel, see, smell, all of the things that you really need to be doing to, to become a better player. So again, this is probably the one that I'm most excited about. Um, and I think it will be uh, I think it will be an invaluable tool for both the individual, um, the team, and uh, the club. So it's uh, it's an exciting piece of tech kit for sure. And mm -hmm. um, so what's not included, um, you know, referee fees for conference games. Um, that's you know that that pretty similar, pretty standard. It's the same for National League Mid South games. And then obviously travel. So travel is going to be probably the biggest expense. Um, but once again, you know, those teams that have been involved in either going to regionals, nationals, National League Mid-South, um, the 05 girls, for example, went to the Jefferson Cup in Virginia, I believe. Um, and then they went to the Blue Chip Showcase this year, which is in Ohio, uh, I think. Um, you know, so those, those top teams that are doing this travel are going to be, the, the fees are going to be fairly similar. Um, you know, there might be a little bit more for conference play travel, but um, I don't envisage it being too uh, egregious and much more than what we've been accustomed to uh, over the last um, few years, especially if you're on one of those top, top level teams that are already traveling and, and going to showcases in National League and Nationals and Regionals and, and everything else that goes with it. And where it will be different is for the youngest teams that have never had to do any of this sort of travel. So the youngest team that's going to be involved is the 2010 boys and girls. So it's, it's, going, to be, it's, it's going to be a bit of a, sh a cultural shock for them, but this is the age now in which they are, are starting to, to really dial in and get get going towards that that travel aspect of the competitive game. So um, again, it's exciting. It'll give them something you've never seen before. It'll, it'll, it'll um, allow them to be seen um, or allow them to see different areas of the country with the very different and unique styles that each uh, area kind of brings. So um, again, it'll be, it'll, it'll be good for them to see the, the level and hopefully it'll raise their game, game substantially and they'll see the benefits of that. Um, as they kind of move forward as well. David, have you anything to add? No, I think you hit it all. Okay, so that, that gives you a kind of brief rundown of, of, of everything that's involved with, with E64. And that's a very, please know, I, I know, that's a very general uh, brief, um, brief assessment of kind of everything that we've got going on. If you've got questions, please feel free to, to reach out and ask us. Um, you know, our emails are there, Mark at Lobos Rush, Julia at Lobos Rush, and Dave at Lobos Rush. So um, all three of us are happy to help. You know, I apologize that we've not been able to get this out quicker um, before now, but you know, some of the information we, we were just now getting, like today, some of it. So um, it's exciting. I'm really excited about the, the direction of E64. Um, it's uh, it's going to be a, a fantastic um, addition to the club, and it, it really completes our pathway from Munchkin Madness all the way up to U19 soccer in the in the college development program. So, um, thank you for if you made it this far, then I appreciate it. And like I said, if you've got any questions, please feel free to reach out to myself, David, or Jules, um, or anybody else at the club, and we'll be able to to help. David, anything? Um, I'm excited. You know, we're in on the ground floor um, and from the, the rush way of player centered, uh, this is a great pathway for all our, you know, young, young men and women and even those that move up in the ranks. So um, this is a great opportunity for them. And I'm excited to be part of that coaching and then also, you know, in the director's role. So i um, excited for our, our kids, our players. So. Good deal. Well, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, that concludes everything that we've got. Um, like I said, if anybody needs anything, feel free to, to reach out and we'll go from there.
Thanks. Thank you.